Good morning. Good morning. I welcome all of you to worship this morning. This is the day the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we can be glad in it as we gather together here to receive God's holy word and to partake in the gift of grace offered in the sacraments. Uh, a few things that I want to lift up before we begin uh, uh, with this uh, second service. Uh, we're only just beginning with all the things happening at our Saviors today. Uh, following the service, we have our annual meeting. So I uh, hope that uh, you can remain for that. Uh, the main uh, thing on the agenda at the annual, annual meeting is to elect new members to the board. Uh, so uh, please uh, be sure to stay for that. And then when you do stay for that, you're in for a treat because at noon we have our taste of our Savior's potluck kicking off our 100th anniversary celebration here at our Savior's. I was a little concerned just a few weeks ago that only one person signed up and, and they were going to bring a bag of chips. <laughs> but I've seen a whole lot of food come in already today. We are in for a treat. So we need you to come and, and to eat some of that food, uh, even if you didn't bring it. So it should be a lot of fun. And then following that, um, you get the opportunity to go into time, to travel to 1918 as uh, we will be uh, um, taking a look at uh, the history of our saviors and what life was like uh, here when our saviors was formed uh, back in 1918. And Mark will be leaving us in that presentation at 1 o'clock this morning. So, so good stuff happening for sure. And also I want to point out as well that uh, um, next Sunday we have a guest, a preacher, uh, uh, Pastor Steve Cotney, assistant to the bishop of our South Central Synod of Wisconsin, will be here, and not just to preach, but to install me uh, as your pastor officially. So not officially yet, um, but next week uh, it will be, and certainly uh, I'm looking forward to that. It will be a special, special event in the history of our church and certainly a special event for, for our family as well. So that's next week. Um, the rest of the announcements uh, you can take a look at for yourself. Well, let us rise now for our Blessed be the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, who stretches out the heavens, who sends light to the nations, who gives breath to us all. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Loving God, we confess that we have turned from your way to follow our own ways. Forgive us for the times we have spoken or acted stupidly. We have not spoken or acted at all. We have heard those closest to us. We have heard those we have yet to know. We have thought more about ourselves than others. We have thought less about ourselves than we ought. Turn us around and give us a fresh start so that we can listen to your children. Amen. Even when we have done wrong, God makes us right. Even when we have messed up, God puts us together. God's love never runs out. God never tires of calling us beloved children. Hear God say to you now, your sins are forgiven for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, in peace, love pray to the Lord. Prophet who speaks 
in the name of the other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I will not, that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, the, pro the prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are your works, O Lord, pondered by all who delight in them. Mag majesty and splendor mark your your deeds and your righteousness endures forever. You lost your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your all of your precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is in your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's grace endures forever. A reading from Corinthians. Now concerning food, sacrifice to idols, we know that all of our us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up by love, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge. But anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of the food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the, word, in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their con conscience begin being weak is def defined. Food will not bring us close to God. We are not worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge eating in the temple of an idol, might they not sense their conscience is weak. Be encouraged to the point of the of the eating food sacrificed to idols. So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you but when you thus sin against members of your family and wound and wound their conscience when it was when it is weak, you sin against Christ, therefore if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. 
They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. And just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed. And they kept asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. O oh Lord God and Jesus, you have given us a voice with power and authority. And so as Christ calls us, may our ears and our souls be open to what Jesus instructs. May we witness and observe his model. And may we recognize that his words are words to live by and that those words impact who we are in relationship with the world and with you. So may your Holy Spirit be present as we learn to grow in understanding and wisdom as we follow you. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So in our text for this morning, we are still in the first chapter of Mark. And this is important to recognize because Mark and putting these stories first is lifting up for us, and this is important to know. And here we have the very first of Jesus' healings, a, a, a person who has demons, has those demons cast out. But, but that's not the most important thing for us to take out of this text. What we need to observe is the way that the crowds were so amazed and impacted by his teaching. Twice in this text, it is lifted up that they cannot believe. They are so struck by the authority that Jesus seems to possess. They've been so hungry for leadership, so hungry for guidance, to now have Jesus enter into the scene and possess such authority that clearly comes from God, it is amazing to them. And so, of course, his fame spreads throughout the region of Galilee. And you know, things haven't changed for us. We continue to live as people who long for authority, who long for leadership. And the problem is that when we look at so many areas of our society, strong leadership and authority is really hard to find at times. And although someone may speak in what they think is an authoritative voice, the way that it is heard is actually quite different. And this past week, here in Wisconsin, two of our professional sports teams gave us great examples of authority and leadership and how sometimes the way things that get expressed doesn't really help matters in trying to get you to understand, to get the people to recognize what's going on. This past Monday, the Milwaukee Bucks fired their basketball coach, Jason Kidd. And the way that that firing happened is just hours before they played a game on Monday night against the Phoenix Suns, the general manager held a press conference and let everybody know that Jason Kidd was fired. And the thing about this press conference is you could tell he was a little nervous. And, and you know, he's about half of my age. He must be a genius with computers and now he was, I guess. They're the ones that they make general managers nowadays. Not so great, though, at being able to talk with the press. 
And so he was peppered with questions. Well, who's going to coach the team? Well, Joe Prunty, the assistant coach, will, will coach, you know, well, you know, at least through Friday. And well, through Friday, well, what's that going to mean? And so there was a lot of confusion. The players didn't know what was going on. The announcers at the game on Monday night didn't know what was going on until there was an interview during halftime in which the general manager said during the interview, oh, yeah, Joe Prunty, he'll coach the rest of the year as the interim coach. Okay. <laughs> now the Bucks won that night. They won on Friday too. But well, we'll see <laughs> if uh, it really turns around for them. There does seem to be a little bit of a suspicious leadership at the top. But that's not the only team that's been on the news. Milwaukee Brewers have been on the news too. Yeah, have you heard what's going on with the Brewers? The signings that they had, yeah, the big trades that they made. But I tell you, that wasn't the biggest news of the week for the Brewers. Uh -huh. The biggest news was the beginning of the week when rumors were starting to come out there that it might be that the Brewers were going to enter into 2018 without the famous racing sausages. Yes! Did you hear about that? Clement Sausages made an announcement that the Brewers had ended a 25-year relationship with them. And so there was suspicion that there would be no more racing hot dogs. There'd be no more Polish sausage to root for. The Italian wouldn't be out there between innings. What's going to happen? And so the Brewers showed some leadership this week when they issued then a press release on Tuesday to try to clear matters up. This was their press release. It's titled, Sizzling News. <laughs> <laughs> With the heat being turned up as the rumors begin to simmer on the future of the Brewers' sausage category sponsorship, there's been speculation about the future of Milwaukee's most legendary runners. Well, the famous racing sausages are a link, quote unquote, <laughs> to the Brewers' past and present, and rest assured, they're also central to the future of the franchise. Stay tuned, more details to come. Aha! A little humor can go a long way in leadership. And the Brewers expressed that. And of course, no longer Clements Racing Sausages. Who's sponsoring them now? Johnsonville. You know, that's the big news, right? The Johnsonville Racing Sausages, of course. Yeah. You know, even Jesus used humor at times as a way of teaching, as a way of um, expressing his authority. It's a good technique to use. But as he's establishing things here in the beginning of Mark's Gospel, it's not humor that he uses. When he gets up there before the crowds, when he gets up front of the synagogue to teach them the word, to teach them about God, he is very clear and he is unwavering. And there is something about the spirit in that space. There is something about the way that Jesus is teaching that they recognize that this is authentic. This is right. And they have been starving for it. That's what Jesus gave to them. And it's what Jesus gives to us as well. But are we ready to listen? Are we ready to hear what Jesus is teaching us? There's a very wise statement that comes to us in today's Psalm 111. I want you to pull out your bulletin, turn to page 5, and take a look at Psalm 111. And I want you to hear that very last verse, that verse 10. Pay attention to it. It says this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice it have good understanding. His praise endures forever. To be growing in understanding, to be growing in wisdom, requires for us to have this fear of the Lord 
And that probably a phrase you've heard before, just what exactly it is, sometimes you don't quite understand. Let me tell you what it isn't. Fear of the Lord is not about you getting on your hands and knees to, to then cower under the pew in terror. That's not fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord is not you locking yourself in your bedroom to never come out again because God might be out there. That's not fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord is an understanding that God is God, God is holy, God is creator, God is almighty, and you're not. It's an understanding about who you are in relationship to God. You are a creature. You are the one that's created. You are mortal, and God is immortal. And as our faith informs our understanding of that reality, we do grow in wisdom. We grow in recognizing just who are we in relationship to God and what that then means in terms of who we are in relationship to other people as well. But how does that wisdom come to us? This is where the next phrase becomes so valuable for us. All who practice it. All who practice it have a good understanding. Practice. Maybe if you were reading the announcements before worship today, you might have noticed, again, great job putting that in there. Our theme for Lent, for Lent services, practice. 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 Why practice? Those who practice it have a good understanding. You know, if you were to have some car problems out in the parking lot after church, you don't want to come to me to help you out. <laughs> because I don't know a thing about engines or batteries or any of that stuff. I haven't practiced it. And though I may look like somebody in authority and have the collar and all that, that's not something you want to come to me with. Because I don't know. I'm not good at it. I haven't followed any model. I haven't watched an expert do it. But when it comes to the ways of God and growing in the fear of the Lord, practicing that, guess what you're doing right now? You're practicing it because you're worshiping today. You practice this through the study of Scripture, through prayer and contemplation on what the will of God is for you and for your family. That's how you practice it. And as you practice, you grow in recognizing just who you are and who God is. As you practice it, you can recognize that just because somebody with some kind of charisma comes up to you and says, God says this, and you should do this, and you should go this way, or whatever it is, doesn't mean that it's real or true. Because you've been dwelling in the Lord and in the Word. You know where authority comes from. You've been practicing it. And so let's practice this together. There's a simple little prayer. It comes from our Eastern Orthodox sisters and brothers. And it, in its words, it really lays it out perfectly. It's addressed to Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. That's it. That can be a practice of ours. To address God as Lord, to address Jesus as the Son of God, our Savior. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, created creature, daughter or son of God ourselves. Have mercy on me, a sinner. And as that becomes our reality, our recognition of who we are, of who God is, of who our brothers and sisters are, our fellow sinners, we do grow in wisdom. We do grow in understanding. And we do grow in the freedom of knowing that we can be as God created us to be, liberated. That last four words of Psalm 111 become real for us 
God's praise endures forever. His praise endures and it will be our praise. But we need to practice it. So let it be our prayer together. May it be our practice that we recognize the voice of authority, our leader and our Lord. And let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Amen.
in our congregations. For the works of God revealed in and through creation. For an end to pollution and unjust use of natural resources. And for good weather this season, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For peace and justice throughout the world. For political leaders at all levels. And for those who provide public services that you will grant them wisdom as they carry out their tasks. For the homeless, the unemployed, the underemployed, and their advocates. For the sick, the suffering, and their caregivers. And for the weak in body, mind, and spirit. That your compassion be felt by all in need, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those in our congregation celebrating special events, for those missing from our worship today, and for friends and family both near and far, we pray for those with specific, specific needs, including those whom we now say aloud or in the silence of our hearts. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed, who witnessed your love in their lives and in this world, that through them our own faith will grow stronger. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, you hear our prayers even before we speak to them. Receive them for the sake of the one through whom you have revealed your goodness, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Through this meal, unite us as your body, shining with the light of your justice and mercy. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you.
religion is required to be a member of this church or that you be Muslim. It is the authority of the Word of God that all are welcome to receive God's grace, that all are welcome with no exceptions.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring for you and keep you in his grace. Amen. <laughs> Jesus. 
a great job. Friends, will you please pray with me? Dear God, dear God, thank you for your advice. Thank you for your advice. And thanks for being an expert. And thanks for being an expert. And teaching me about God. And teaching me about God. In your name, in your name, we play and pray. Even Jesus needed to be trained, and he did. He lived his life as a child, a young adult, trained, and he was ready to be baptized by John and Jordan. All right, now let's go. Please rise. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with faith and bring you peace. Amen.